This is Morty Lefko with podcast number 18, and this is August 31st, 2010. What should I do to get what I want? Thank you very much for the overwhelming response to my request last week for blog topics. The questions that seem to have universal appeal, I'll answer in my weekly blog. Comments and questions that deal with specific personal issues, I'll respond to directly as soon as possible. This week, I'll answer a question I hear frequently in various forms. What should I do to get what I want? To begin with, there's no single right way to accomplish anything. What works for some people won't necessarily work for others, and what's effective today won't necessarily be effective tomorrow. Personal qualities determine success. One common technique people use to figure out how to achieve their goals is to copy the behavior of successful people. Unfortunately, more often than not, that technique doesn't work. Why? Because successful people are successful because of who they are, not merely what they do. Obviously, they do things, but their doing is a function of their being, not a function of rules for success. So what are successful people? In Success Built to Last by Jerry Porras, Stuart Emery, and Mark Thompson, a must-read book about what's in common among over 200 enduringly successful people, the authors offer a definition of success based on what these people told them. Quote, A life and work that brings personal fulfillment and lasting relationships and makes a difference in the world in which they live. Close quote. I like what the book's authors say about the conventional definition of success. Quote, Folks who chase a fantastic but vain hope for fame, wealth, and power for its own sake may even achieve it, only to become miserable and pathetic people. We think that the current definition of success is a potentially toxic prescription for your life and work. It's a description that makes you feel more like a failure than a success if it's the standard against which all meaning in your life is measured. Let me quote a few more passages from this book that describe these enduringly successful people so that you can discover who these people are rather than what they do. These people, quote, insist that success may never come without a compelling personal commitment to something you care about and would be willing to do, with or without counting on fame, wealth, power, or public acceptance as an outcome. Close quote. Here's another quote. What you do must matter deeply to you. It's something that you're so passionate about that you lose all track of time when you do it. In fact, you could not be paid to not do it. Close quote. Another essential element is, quote, a highly developed sense of accountability, audacity, passion, and responsible optimism. Steve Jobs told us in an interview back before his famous ad campaign, enduringly successful people think different, close quote. They welcome failures. One of the most important qualities of these enduringly successful people is that they, quote, drone on endlessly about learning from their mistakes. Every experience teaches something. They don't use a weakness or a setback to distrust themselves. The question is not whether or not they won this round, but what they do with the feedback. They find it irresistible to try, fail, improve, they try again, fail again, and get even better, close quote. Although these people probably worked more hours a day than most people are willing to, they were not successful because they worked harder than others or even because they knew better than others what to do. They operated out of their passion and commitment to make a difference. They didn't care what others thought. They courted failure as a way to learn what to do better the next time. What these people have in common is an absence of negative beliefs that would cause them to need acceptance and fear failure, personal qualities that stop most people. Quote, they just tolerate the risks, feel the fears, take the brickbacks, learn from failures, and do what matters to them anyway. Close quote. Implement what emerges. But you still might be asking, what is their standard for deciding what to do? With their vision and commitment as a context, their actions are driven by their answer to the question, what behavior is appropriate to further my passion? 
They do whatever is appropriate at the moment. In other words, their behavior is a function of their vision and commitment, not something copied from others or from a list of best practices. They take advantage of what emerges moment by moment. You see, when you live your passion, you're always looking for how to manifest it in the world. As opportunities emerge, act on them. Some opportunities will prove fruitful. Build on them. Some won't. Learn from them. Are you willing to do what's necessary? Are you starting to get a sense that people who are successful over a long period of time are not like most people? If you really want to be like these people, here are a few tips. Are you committed enough to use them? One, get rid of any negative beliefs and conditionings that impair your confidence, that have you worry about what others think, that have you act to gain their approval, and that have you fear failure and rejection. Two, get in touch with who you really are, namely, the consciousness that always was and always will be, in my terms, the creator of your creation. You can use my Who Am I Really process to help you experience this state where you also will experience on a very deep level that life has already turned out and that material success is not required for true success. Three, discover what you're passionate about. A book written by two friends of mine that should be helpful is The Passion Test by Janet and Chris Atwood. Four, have your life be about living your passion and making a contribution to others. Put more of your focus on the journey than on the destination. Five, learn how to distinguish between reality and how reality occurs to you, and then dissolve your occurring. Because events as such have no meaning, they can never cause any feelings, including fear, which is the biggest roadblock to taking action. So learning how to dissolve your occurring and deal only with unvarnished reality will enable you to banish fear from your life. If you do all this, who knows? you might be featured in the next edition of Success Built to Last. Please share on my blog, MortyLefko.com, any thoughts you have on my column this week. If you haven't yet eliminated at least one of your limiting self-esteem beliefs using the Lefko belief process, go to RecreateYourLife.com, where you can eliminate one limiting belief free. And to purchase a DVD program that I guarantee to help you significantly improve your confidence and eliminate the major day-to-day -day problems that most people face, check out Recreate Your Life forward slash store and click on Natural Confidence. See you next week. Have a good day.